Wow, the light of the screen is bright enough this morning. That's amazing. I don't know how the autofocus is, but good morning. We are in Torres del Paine, Chile, Chilean, pa Chilean Patagonia. It's a bit windy and uh, it is 6.30, almost seven in the morning. And we've come to a amazing lagoon kind of lookout point near the Explora Hotel to see if we can get some uh, sunrise reflections. And it all starts right now. Let's go. Oh yeah, Dennis, these are perfect clouds. Come on, baby, there's already light in the sky. This will be good for a long exposure. We are down at the lake here near the Explorer Hotel and there's usually a beautiful, beautiful reflection on this lagoon of the uh, Cuernos and Paine Grande. Uh, right now it's a little bit windy but not too bad but enough that it's uh it's kind of causing ripples across the lake so i'm doing long exposures to just kind of smoothen that out and unfortunately there's not a lot of interest in the lagoon this morning usually there's something floating like some dead wood some driftwood or some rocks you know and you can sometimes use a polarizer to uh to accentuate the rocks in the foreground but uh this morning i think i'm pretty happy with just sort of your stock standard shots of uh, this beautiful alpine glow we're one hour before sunrise here it's amazing how early the light is it's really best super super early like well before sunrise and uh and yeah it's been pretty cool so i'm gonna move from the lakeside up to the boardwalk, you can almost see the people on that rock there behind me. It's a pretty good bokeh with the Sony A7S III. But uh, I'm gonna move up to that rock and see if I can get a wide of the whole area as the uh, as the sun comes up. But yeah, good start here to first day in Torres del Paine. All right, we're up on the hill and uh, it's busy. As you can see, this is uh, becoming a bit of a theme from the last video with the hidden waterfall, secret waterfall, as Brendan likes to think that he's named it. <laughs> you didn't name the secret waterfall. <laughs> I'm just giving him shit. So uh, yeah, it's obviously things are changing here from 2017 when we first came here till now. There's uh, a lot more people, but that, I, actually, you know what I said last time, I'm not sure if it's a bad thing. This time I think it might be a bit of a bad thing. This is uh, quite busy, but... Do you know why it's busy? Brendan's asking, do you know why it's busy? You gotta talk to the new mic. So the reason it's busy... <laughs> okay, not that bad. Oh, not that close? No. The I smell nice this morning. The reason it's busy is because in Torres del Paine, they've restricted the movement of everybody. You can't go on hiking trails anymore outside of daylight hours. So all of these awesome viewpoints and stuff like that that were on hiking trails, you can't go on them anymore. Can't go up to Mirador Condor, can't go to Mirador Cuernos. This is the only place. In fact, I don't even think we're really supposed to be standing here. No, this here. is the boardwalk to get to explore. We're on the boardwalk. Yeah, we're, we're technically we're on the boardwalk. Currently on the boardwalk. But the light is really starting to pop. So uh, the high level clouds catching light. It looks really, really good. Got my dead cat on the chest. I call it a fuzzy oh. nipple. <laughs> all right. So this is a massive. So it's actually one big magma eruption. Ah! All right, it is just after 9 a.m. in the morning. We're back on the boardwalk. And uh, that was a pretty beautiful sunrise. The wind has uh, calmed down quite a lot and we were able to get some uh, nice results, both from down on the lagoon 
and from up here and even though it's really busy you know everybody was able to kind of spread out and get uh, the same sort of angle on a really classic shot so wide angle uh, nice long exposure with a couple filters i put a 1.8 stop i can't remember six stop i think it is nd filter and then a soft grad on top and that created a very very nice result and i'm happy with so now it is time to head back to the hotel we get a couple of hours break then we're going to go towards lago gray and uh, explore some of this amazing color because here we still have fall color it's further south and it's not as high elevation as El Chalten, which means that you get still these beautiful classic Patagonian colors. Look at these trees that I'm surrounded by right now. This is what we're gonna try and find this afternoon around Lago Grey. And then here's a sunset shoot as well. So a lot to explore in this video and the beauty of Torres del Paine, Patagonia. Our first day here in Torres del Paine continues and that was uh, pretty fun to get the drone up in the air. We're staying at Rio Serrano, which is outside of the park on the south side and offers a uh, pretty beautiful view. There's a couple of good photo spots from, uh, from Rio Serrano as well uh, that I've seen and, and I think I photographed from the Mirador. I know I've definitely done it in the evening, but I haven't done it at sunrise I don't think but that might be for tomorrow or the next day it looks like there's a storm rolling in so we're trying to make the most of uh, the one day here that we've got pretty good weather uh, this morning was nice and right now the wind is picked up but it's still dry which is good so I'm heading towards Lago Grey at the moment and uh, there's some beautiful color in this forest oh there's that wind so oof, it might be pretty exposed down there well let's see what we can find at Lago Grey Recording. All right, we've left uh, Lago Grey. We're making our way towards Salto Grande and Mirador Cuernos, which is uh, another pretty popular spot here in the park. I'm sure you've seen video footage and photos from there from older videos or just, uh, you know, some of the most recognizable photos from this area. Uh, but I don't expect it to be too busy. I don't think, not like this morning anyway. If you're going all the way to Mirador Cuernos, you have to be in by five. If you're going to Salto Grande, then it's six. Oh, there it goes! <laughs> oh, Holy no shit! That went really far. Hold on, hold on, I gotta go get it. Whoa! No, no, no! Yes! Woo! Whoa! Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen, for our brief interruption from today's programming. Brought to you by the wind of Patagonia. My goodness, now I gotta look like Mr. BVS with my hat backwards. But yeah, this is uh, Salto Grande is the first stop here. 
which is a wind tunnel. And then we're gonna make our way towards Mirador Cuernos and see if there's any photographers there. I don't think there will be in this wind. It's a good test for the mic. Holy shit. Oh! Patagonia, baby. This is Patagonia. First casualty of the trip here is uh, a piece of my gear. This is a three-stop soft grad filter on the front and the tripod just took a very, very small tumble and uh, went straight down, filter first onto the beach and here we go. Nice uh, smashed glass. So luckily I have a replacement. I have the exact same one and I'm a little worried to take it off because I'm afraid that the 10 stop and D filter on underneath that has been, uh, has been scraped. So I'm gonna have to do that really slowly and then replace it with the, uh, the second one that I have, which again, is very lucky, but still crazy. First casualty of the trip, my gear, of course, of course, of course. We have a slight respite from the wind here, walking back towards the Salto Grande parking lot. And uh, that was something else. So as uh, a small accident aside, that was a pretty cool location to, uh, to get some shots. I thought you would recognize that place from, <coughs> from past videos or from, from other photos. It's, uh, it's covered in driftwood, that whole beach side. And uh, a lot of the times, the wood kind of comes across the lake and then patches up onto the beach and then sometimes the park wardens will actually come by and pick it up and just throw it off to the side. So every once in a while you can find a nice piece that you like and put it in the water as a subject and then after you're done photographing you can take it and put it back on the side of the beach. So that's what we did there. Everybody found their own uh, piece of driftwood and got a, a nice photo that I'm sure they can be happy with. Now with it being so windy, we were only able to get about a maximum of 20 seconds long exposure to make that water look really, really kind of ghost-like. And it's got an amazing turquoise color to it. So that was very, very cool. And uh, nice shots of the Cuernos. So good way to end this video as well. As I said earlier, this really isn't a sunset location. All of Patagonia is a sunrise kind of uh, destination for photography. So we are gonna continue our adventures here with the storms that are rolling in well, along this wind and uh, hopefully we've got a fun video in store for you coming up next. So I will see you in our next video from right here in Tortoise del Paine, Patagonia. I've learned and I will share with you right now this one piece of information. You take yourself and you immerse yourself. You take yourself one step further than everybody else is willing to go. You don't look for that obvious shot, the classic iconic image. No, 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 my friends, you go the other way. You turn your camera 90 degrees away from that epic subject and you find something unique for yourself because nature is there waiting for you. It is there, it is vibrant and alive and we can immerse ourselves in it to get a much better shot than anybody else has. I mean, it's, 
it's going to be so good that people just won't even believe that it's real. And, and I mean it. When I get into editing and I start utilizing that AI, you are going to be mind blown. You're going to be like, wow, that red is so red. How did it get that red? And I'll say it was like that.